Welcome to my virtual tour of the Pollinator Paradise Garden at Chatham Mills in Pittsburgh. I thought this would be a great way to share what's happening in the garden during the month of July and show you some of my favorite plants and pollinators. The Pollinator Paradise Garden is a project of the Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension. It's a demonstration garden that is designed to showcase pollinator habitat for the Piedmont of North Carolina. My name is Debbie Roos and I'm an agriculture agent with the Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension. I created the Pollinator Paradise Garden back in 2008 and it's since grown to include over 220 unique species, about 85% of which are native to North Carolina. I don't maintain the garden by myself. I have a really great group of volunteers who help me. July has been super hot and dry in the Piedmont of North Carolina. In fact, we broke a record for the number of days above 90 degrees, and many days were even in the mid-90s or above, and very little rainfall to boot. But in spite of that, we still averaged about 75 species blooming each week in the pollinator garden. The garden phlox looks really great combined with the cone flowers, and it also smells great. Here's a close-up view of the garden phlox showing that beautiful purple eye. This is Phlox paniculata delta snow. The ironweeds start blooming in July. This is Vernonia lettermanii, commonly called threadleaf ironweed or cutleaf ironweed. Here you can see a hummingbird moth nectaring on it, and you'll also find lots of different bees and butterflies that enjoy it. I also have the much taller New York ironweed in the pollinator garden, and actually the New York ironweed and the shorter threadleaf ironweed have crossed, and that's what you're looking at here. Uh, it looks really nice with the brown-eyed Susan and the obedient plant in the background. This sunflower bee is foraging on stemless ironweed, Vernonia acaulis, and you can see the smallest goldenrod in the background. I love including the ornamental oreganos in the garden. I have several different cultivars. This is Pilgrim, and you can see the common buckeyes are really enjoying it. The oregano stems also make a great perch for dragonflies like this Halloween pennant. I have 10 different species of native milkweed in the garden. This is Asclepius viridifolia, green comet milkweed. It has a really unique green flower and here this bumblebee is enjoying it. Common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca, has a wonderful fragrance and attracts many different pollinators, including honeybees, native bees, butterflies, and many other species. And of course, like other milkweeds, it's the host plant for the monarch butterfly caterpillar. This green link spider is so well camouflaged on the milkweed leaves, you have a hard time seeing it, but you can see the beetle it's feeding on. The native field thistle, Circium discolor, started blooming in early June, and it's still going strong in July. It gets pretty tall, up to six feet or more, and here it's paired with the equally tall green-headed coneflower, Rebecca laciniata. I often see bumblebees and other native bees and wasp and soldier beetles visiting green-headed coneflower. The native field thistle attracts a tremendous diversity of pollinators like this pipe vine swallowtail. I see lots of different native bees on the field thistle. The thistle seems particularly attractive to bumblebees and sweat bees. The Minarda citriodora, or lemon bee balm, looks great combined with the bronze fennel.
Only about 15% of the plants in my pollinator garden are not native to North Carolina. Most of them tend to be herbs like this bronze fennel. It does a great job of attracting honeybees and many other pollinators. And of course, bronze fennel is a really great host plant for the black swallowtail caterpillar. There are a few plants in my pollinator garden that I just love for attracting such a diversity of pollinators. Rattlesnake master or Oryngium yuccifolium is definitely on that list. I've always liked weird flowers and this bloom of the rattlesnake masters got this strange spiky white ball with no petals. And I guess this scoliad wasp is finding what it needs on it. American Beautyberry Calicarpa Americana is a great choice for the pollinator garden. I love its little lavender blooms and it's going to put on a great display of gorgeous purple berries in the fall. Another plant celebrated for attracting a diversity of pollinators is Jopa weed, Eutrochium dubium. You could park yourself in front of a Jopa weed patch and just count over a dozen different species visiting it. These four tooth mason wasps are managing to do a little multitasking on the Jopa weed, but I'll leave it to you to interpret the drama unfolding here. Because Jopa weed attracts so many pollinators, it also attracts a lot of predators like this robber fly, also called a bee panther. I watched it perched here on this leaf. And then all of a sudden it took off and grabbed this honeybee and within seconds was back to feed on it. Blue vervain or verbena hestata is a tall, graceful plant that attracts lots of different small native bees and other pollinators. Leafcutter bees like the tiny flowers of Verbena hestata. By mid-July, the bee balm in the foreground has stopped blooming and is starting to form seeds. A lot of people think of midsummer as a dearth period of bloom in North Carolina, but it doesn't have to be. You can see a lot of diversity here with the anise hyssop and the orange cone flowers and the poppy mallows and other species. The scopa or branched hairs on the legs of the sunflower bee carry a lot of pollen from the bloom of the orange coneflower. I always get a thrill when I spot one of the predators among the blooms in the pollinator garden. Even though they're often eating one of my beloved pollinators, everybody's got to eat, right? This is the nymph of the wheel bug, which is North Carolina's largest assassin bug species. It's feeding on a beetle, and if you look closely, you can see its very impressive beak that it uses to impale its prey and feed on it. How about this red, white, and blue combo just in time for the 4th of July? We've got some red cardinal flower, white culver's root, and blue hoary skullcap. Black swallowtail butterflies love nectaring on cardinal flower, Lobelia cardinalis. I'd like to have more Lobelia in the garden, but I don't quite have enough shade and moist areas that it prefers. In my opinion, Culver's root, Veronicastrum virginicum, is an underutilized plant in North Carolina gardens. I think everybody should have some. If you have wet soil, it'll do great, but I have it in just regular dry conditions and it does fine. You can see in the background here, I have a cup plant, Sylphium perfoliatum, and then the blue in the middle is the hoary skullcap. I've been seeing a lot of goldfinches lately, and their song always cheers me up. 
They love eating the seeds of things like this tall tick seed, Coreopsis triptyrus. I'm also seeing them now on the cone flowers, but this is a good reason why you don't want to deadhead all your flowers. You want to let them go to seed for the birds. I love the soft periwinkle blue of the hoary skullcap, Scutellaria incana. I'll find lots of bees like carpenter bees and bumblebees visiting it frequently. And it has really nice fall color on the foliage and a really pretty seed head. The tall red rose mallow, Hibiscus coccineus, is another example of a plant that can do well in either wet soil or average dry soil. Lytra spicata is still going strong in July and attracting lots of butterflies like this tiger swallowtail and many different species of bees. Buttonbush, Cephalanthus occidentalis, is an excellent shrub for the pollinator garden. It usually starts blooming in June and will bloom sporadically all the way into September. So for four months, you'll have butterflies like this American lady, as well as bees and beetles and wasps enjoying it. If you'll recall my stated fondness for weird flowers, Buttonbush definitely has a unique bloom. It's another white spiky ball. And you can see the silver spotted skipper is enjoying the bloom. You can always count on the anise hyssop to be a pollinator magnet. This is Agastache funiculum, blue fortune. And it's combined here with the orange coneflower, Rebecca fulgida. One of my all-time favorite native vines is spurred butterfly pea, Centrosema virginianum. I plant it as a ground cover and just let it ramble over its neighbors, in this case the spotted bee balm, Monarda fruticulosa. I'm also happy to report that it's quite deer resistant. Spurred butterfly pea has this beautiful, unique upside-down bloom. It has lots of different pollinators, including honeybees, native bees, and butterflies, and also serves as a larval host for a couple of species of our butterflies. The bumblebee lands on the flower seeking nectar and then pushes the anthers out, and that's how they get covered in pollen. I've mostly planted the spurred butterfly pea vine in full sun in the garden, but here's a bed that receives part sun, so I wanted to try it here as well. I planted this vine last fall, and you can see that it's doing quite well in part shade. I have eight different species of native mountain mint in the pollinator garden. This is Appalachian mountain mint, Pycnanthemum flexuosum. And mountain mints in general are just known for attracting lots of different pollinators. Purple passionflower or maypop is another one of my favorite vines. Passiflora incarnata is great for pollinators and also has an edible fruit and is a medicinal plant. If you see carpenter bees in your area that have a yellow thorax covered in pollen, then you know you have passionflower vine in your area. While lots of folks are familiar with our purple passion flower, I think most people are not aware we also have a native yellow passion flower vine, Passiflora lutea, and it's quite popular with the bees and wasp like this katydid wasp. The katydid wasp is a solitary thread-waisted wasp that captures and paralyzes katydids and uses them to provision the nest underground to provide food for its larvae. 
This yellow passion flower vine is growing alongside orange coneflower, and another frequent visitor is the mason wasp, which captures caterpillars to feed its young. Yellow passion flower definitely falls into the category of weird flowers that I've already told y'all I like. It has the same exact structure as the purple passion flower, but the bloom is smaller than a quarter and has a very unusual green yellow color. This colorful jumping spider has found that the leaf of yellow passion flower vine serves as a perfect perch to look for prey. Thank you for joining me for my virtual garden tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my pollinator garden website. You'll find hundreds of photos and videos, bloom list and plant list, and lots of links to fact sheets that'll help you with your pollinator gardening efforts. See you next month.